and I'll figure out mm-hmm. where exactly to put it. But uh, if you're tuning in whenever, wherever, I'm Baratunde Thurston. This is a segment for Live on Lockdown, and I'm talking to Rahaf Harfush. You got it. Nailed it. Oh, I love saying people's names right. When your name is Baratunde, <laughs> you cannot make mess up other interesting names. Um, and when I last saw you, Rahaf, we were uh, dining luxuriously, relaxedly, on a corner with our bays in Paris. And yes. you had sold us on the French lifestyle, on the quality of produce, on the joie de vivre. And so I'm uh, checking in with you because I saw you post on one of my uh, Instagram posts that you'd be happy to share some of your experience. And I just looked through your story most recently. So I got a little bit of flavor, but why don't you let me uh, and anyone else watching know, where are you and how are you? So where am I? Um, So normally I live in Paris, uh, but since we live in crazy times, uh, my husband and I recently had purchased like a a, a home um, uh, in the French countryside. And so we have fled the city of Paris there. which we're, I'm so grateful, so grateful, so incredibly lucky to have a place outside of the city to go to. Um, and, you know, like, I'm feeling all the emotions. Like, I'm okay. I'm feeling pretty good. We are, as I mentioned, quite lucky. We're in the countryside now, so we're not around anybody. We are really locking down. Um, they're being quite strict here. I don't know if you've heard, but in France, you have to have this, uh, like, permission sheet, this attestation it's called, that you have to have with you every single time you go outside to justify why you're going outside. It's, like, very limited, acceptable activities, like taking care of elderly or young kids, going grocery shopping, doing exercise, but only within the proximity of your house. And if you don't have that sheet, you get, like, fined. You're in big trouble with the police. So on that end, it's been a bit weird. And then as a whole, I'm feeling very anxious that all the content and the people that I'm seeing haven't fully grasped how long-term, how devastating, how much we are in for a change. And um, just before we spoke, uh, a friend of mine sent me a link of people partying uh, and having lockdown parties and hanging out together because it's not a big deal and it'll blow over. So I'm feeling, you know, nervous and sad and my friends in Paris are on lockdown and so some people are in teeny tiny apartments and it's just, it's, All I can say is, you know, looking towards America, like, please learn from what is happening in Europe because it is coming. Cool. That was a really nice. uh, No, 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 no. There's no need to apologize. Uh, I'm I'm also experimenting with the technical format here. So I'm going to put myself up larger screen for a minute to thank you for that uh, thorough answer. Thank you for that honest answer. I asked how you how you are and where you are. And you gave really good uh, responses on both. I would love to uh, have you explain a bit of who you are and how you came to live in France. Because as I recall, I think we met in the United States, but then you're Canadian, but you're living in France. So you're one of these global citizens. And in the age of pandemic, um, how does that part of your identity kind of react to being somewhat quarantined in a countryside of a nation where I don't think, at least correct me if wrong, you're not a citizen. So why don't you uh, help me out on that? Yeah, so that's also uh, a, a bit of a, a story. Very In a very summarized way, I'm um, a, a Syrian. I'm a Canadian citizen. I came to France uh, to work. I have a work permit. France has a, a special type of work card called a competent, like an O visa, basically. I'm, on a, I'm, I'm the equivalent of an O visa here because I do research and I teach and I do creative work and I write. Um, so I've, I've been in France for the last eight years. Um, A large part of my job involves travel, involves going to events and conferences, involves uh, going into companies, meeting with groups of people. So as you can imagine, uh, from an economic perspective, I started out January kind of strong, and then everything on my calendar from February for the foreseeable future has been canceled. Um, All the events I was supposed to go to, all the travel, everything has just gone to a complete standstill. Um, I'm okay not being a citizen because I have a permit and because I live in France, you know, I'm 
am de facto, like I can move and come as I go. Um, Provided you have the right papers. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like if I was a tourist, I would be getting out. Um, but I, I lived here for seven years, um, so eight years now. And so that's also been a bit of an adjustment. It's been, I'm sure, as many people can relate to the business uncertainty of what's going to happen to my clients, my work, my projects. And, and that's been an interesting psychological path to navigate as you're like packing up, as you're, you know, hearing the news every day. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. And and do you feel, um, what is your level of confidence in the governmental response at whatever level in the nation of France, whether it's from Macron at the very top or in the region where you're uh, living right now in terms of your country house? So I live now where I am. It's a very small region. So because there's not a lot of people and it's a quite a small community, it's been a bit more relaxed. There's been no rushing the grocery stores type of vibe, you know. But um, I think the government has done the right thing by locking it all down. I think it was inevitable. Um, it was really funny because on Thursday, Macron came and he was like, okay, guys, this is serious, but if everyone is reasonable, we can manage. Like, just restrict your movements and don't gather and don't do this. But, like, if you do this, we'll all be able to, to get together, and it'll be fine. And then on Sunday or Saturday night, the prime minister came, and he was like, clearly none of you can follow directions or be reasonable, so we're shutting down bars and restaurants, and we need you to stay home. <laughs> yeah. And then Monday night, the president comes on, and he's like, we closed bars and restaurants and you went to parks. Like, clearly you don't understand. <laughs> he was like the disappointed dad. You know, he was pretty much like, you're all grounded. And yeah. I have to say, like, he gave us a chance. I think, I know people are criticizing, say you should be, you know, you should have done faster. It should, uh, pe the government should react faster. I think they tried to give us a shot to have the minim most minimal disruption. And we just all showed. I mean, I was out for a very quick. I'm, I'm very social. I, I, I've been terrified about this, seeing the data. So I took my dog out for a 10 minute around the block, staying far away from everybody, you know, type of, of walk. And I saw people having picnics in the park. You know, it was like people just don't get how serious it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you think that people, you know, is the lag between the seriousness you um, take this at versus some of the folks you're seeing in the wider population? Is that gap closing? Are people starting to get it? Is the disappointed dad uh, tone kicking in? I, I mean, look, you're a data person. I'm a data person. So if I'm not, if I'm not getting my information from the news, I'm getting my information from the data sets that are being released by doctors and hospitals and governments and the World Health Organization. So I'm seeing the trends, right? And I don't know if that gap is closing because I'm realizing we're asking people, for many people that aren't deep diving into the, the data, into the information, we're asking them to inconvenience themselves and we're asking them to do it against an enemy that they can't see, that they might have, but that might not impact them, that they're gonna be okay. So we're asking them to, cancel weddings and cancel vacations and not go out and not socialize and not go to the gym and all these things, but without the payoff of being able to see the threat. So I, I unfortunately don't think we're going to take it seriously until when it gets to Italy levels and when you start seeing the death and then you'll have that imminent threat right and actually i don't know who it was i believe it was either npr or the atlantic they posted this project by an italian filmmaker that had italians sending videos to themselves from 10 days ago just 10 days ago and they were sending a video to how little how you know the lack of concern they had 10 days ago and how much it changed in 10 days and what they wish they could tell themselves from just 10 days ago as a message to the rest of the world at how quickly and how i mean how intensely things can change in a short period of time so yeah. i unfortunately i don't think the gap is closing at all so so i'm going to ask you you already hinted at this uh, a few minutes ago where you kind of addressed the american people so i'm going to give you a job I'm going to give you a job of a supreme commander of pandemic response uh, to be able to address uh, the humans of the United States primarily, which is where most of the folks live who will see this video. 
and you are in a bit of a future state relative to where we are. Um, so talk to us from our possible future and, and tell us what we need to know, uh, what you hope for us and what you want us to do or not do to, to maybe more gracefully enter your future or maybe to sidestep it a little bit if you still think that's possible. So I'm, I'm responsible for the, the, the pandemic response. I get to like make all the decisions. You're, you're responsible for how the people respond. So, so not okay. necessarily industry I'm and science. Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody stay the fuck home. Don't know if I can swear. I'll do you already thing. did it. So keep going. Uh, no, stay home. Stay home. Socially isolate. Don't go to the gym. Don't go to restaurants. Don't go have parties. Don't see your friends. Just stay home and give your healthcare providers, your doctors, your hospitals, your nurses, give them the chance to treat the people that are going to get really sick. Uh, I know it's inconvenient. I know it sucks. I know it seems like a lot to ask, but millions of people are going to die if you don't. So if you, going to the gym is more important than the lives of potentially millions of your fellow Americans, then, you know, maybe you need to sit and think about what's important in your life. But it's such a small thing. If I can say one thing, it would be it's such a small ask. It is such an easy ask. And I'm not saying stay home if you have to work or stay home if you, if you have to, if you absolutely have to go out. I'm saying stay home if you can so that the people that have to go out, they're also protected and they're limited in their exposure. And it's not just about high risk. It's not just about the elderly. This is about protecting doctors. It's about protecting businesses. It's about protecting the economy. Because if we don't all do our part now, just look at the data. The only thing that has stopped the spread has been total lockdown. Anything else is just going to slow the roll. And I don't even think it's going to slow it enough to make a difference anymore. Thank you so much. You nailed it. You're our leader now. I totally appreciate that. We're having, I don't know if you've noticed some troubles with our uh, national level leadership. So um, you're a president and just everybody listen to President Rahaf. <laughs> all right. She's, she's data-based. She's science-based. She's not likening this to uh, just uh, a flu as our own leader did. Uh, feels like years ago now, but it was, I think, a week ago. So I, I appreciate that. And then is there anything else that you want to um, address, add, talk about? I can, you know, if not, I can stop the recording and we can just hang. But I think for the purposes of, of an interview, if there's anything else you want to add, here's, here's a moment. Yeah, I mean, as somebody who is living the curve a little bit, a couple of weeks ahead of you guys, just going through this experience, um, I'm going to give you a, just a couple of quick things that have really helped me um one it's real it's a stressful time and it's going to feel scary when the lockdown comes when you suddenly realize everything that's happening it's going to be quite scary so my first tip is to give yourself a bit of a break and don't expect to be as productive or you know on top of everything as you uh, would, would would hope to be i would say take the time to make your home as inviting and comfortable as possible in the sense of like, take care of yourself. Like I have been here the past few days. I haven't even looked at work email. I've been nesting and just making sure that everything's okay because it's quite stressful. The second thing is I would say work through your emotions. I'm feeling like quite a bit of rage these days at people that are not acting in accordance with what, you know, what the severity of, of what they should be doing. And we should process that and talk about it. I feel scared about the future, I feel hopeful, I feel angry, I feel sad, like, just give yourself the space to kind of just process that as we're going through this. And then the third is to think about what you can contribute to your community. There have been during this time, so many good initiatives, we've seen factories repurposed um, to start producing sanitizer gels here, the LVMH uh, factories and the perfume departments here are being repurposed to make hand sanitizers, we're seeing people stepping in and helping other people pay the bills. Um, in France, in Paris, every night at 8 p.m., everybody goes to their balcony and they do an applause. They applaud for all the healthcare workers that are on the front line. So if you're standing in Paris and in other cities in France, so like try to be a part of the community. And 
if you're feeling resistance to anything that I'm saying, that is a very good indication that you might have a little bit of denial. This isn't going to blow over after the quarantine. This isn't going to be a two week, a three week. We are looking at, in all honesty, a 12 to 18 month time horizon of disruption. Now, that could be a time of connection, of ideation, of creativity, of prosperity, of community, or that can be scary, isolating, and, you know, a negative experience. So, like, let's choose which one we want to do, but definitely lengthen your time horizon because this is going to be the next year and a half, almost two years of our lives as we figure out how to maneuver in this new reality. I am slow clapping. I just, I want, this is me slow clapping. Uh, Thank you. That was, that was practical. It was inspirational. It was motivational. It was epidemiological. It was mathematical. (laughs) It was all the, all the calls, all the ulls. And, uh, and I so appreciate you taking the time. I really like the note about, um, you know, acknowledging your emotional state. And I think, you know, there's a, a trick, a process I learned from a friend, Tricia Wong, to do at the beginning of meetings and like, you know, sort of work meetings, gatherings of friends, whatever, where you do this, it's called a PEM check. So your physical, emotional, and mental state, and you kind of check in with that. So I think for future interviews, I am going to um, offer that to, to the people that I'm speaking with. And I encourage everyone watching to just do it for yourself if you're with someone else in your home. Uh, do that with each other. If you're in a Zoom call with colleagues or enemies, uh, do it with with them. <laughs> then it's probably more interesting with you. First of all, if you're Zooming with your enemies, like good for you. you know, that's a time of connection. Like nemesis. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you'll never yes. guess what I've done to you. It's like, how are you feeling, man? <laughs> uh, so, so we've been talking with uh, Rahaf Harfouche in the countryside of France, where they are a few weeks ahead of us in time and uh, and response and so we're we're talking to the future this is an interview this is like a time travel interview and uh, i want to thank you so much for giving us that i'm going to end the recording now fyi so you can say the real things you want to say <laughs>